No. Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. It is a turn. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tanthus Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her I breath, into a pod. she dashed over and dove inside. And this is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scu scu scuff, scruff of the neck and making this happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making the choice together. However great that is. However great. Wait, how what? I didn't read that right. <laughs> this man is a liar. Excuse me? I will not. This town has a dangerous secret and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense Mr. here. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated, Miss Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to. You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing and tiresome. A little help, please? Don't you all see this festival is a sham? An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the Dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry about this disruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable so that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. You too, time and clown. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... Okay. 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 Hold on. <laughs> Resume. So my theory was that this kid is really the founder. And if the mom went into a pod and she was made old, does that mean the founder was put into a pod to become young? Did he take her life force? What happened? Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. Yes, sir. Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Ah, uh, the ever temptuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to pull over, well, pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expect something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr? Yes, sir? It's a shame it was cut short, but I thank you for the rousing or oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You have done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the re recomp 
recom recompense rec recompense recompense we are <laughs> agreed upon gave a bow of deference her gave a bow of deference founder you are most gracious gasps rippled through the crowd thankfully we can dispense with the formalities from here on solomon out solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket in one smooth motion he downed its contents a triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can all call me. See, I knew it! I knew it! I knew he was sharper! His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. I think I figured that out this, the first stream. <laughs> Maybe it was the second one, but I knew it! He's farting. What's wrong with you? A hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. What? No! Ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with my own eye, with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be a dear and re reveal the sign. Sharper Valentine Festival. Ha, wonderful. Sharper choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Sharper, you malicious bastard. Alice, where would we use that? I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? Helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children? Daddy? I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourself in my absence. Squandered. I say I am disappointed would be an understatement, but I silence Augustus, an adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse, a son who is completely hopeless or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Harris, you fail me with admiral consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Counting on it? Father, I have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on Cementing our legacy. Legacy? You're petting your cat the way a villain would, so <laughs> as they spin around in their chair to reveal their master plan. Am I really? No, I'm not. I'm just playing with his tail. I love his tail. It's fluffy. It's keeping me calm. I'm anxious to figure out what's going on. And if I don't pet him, he'll be terror. He's the villain, not me. <laughs> Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You are about to reach beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact. If he remains loyal, that goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already fr frittered away my goodwill. 
Beacon Pines is mine again, and I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of perennial harvest? Ha! You think that puffed up blather skite could have accomplished all of this? Don, I suppose this is time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone in mis to misdirect lie and lick this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr. Invented? Take your bow, you've earned Mr. it. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Patrick C. Montesquieu? Montesquieu? That is Montesquieu, right? <laughs> There's been an extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly was the role of a lifetime. Wait, so this Bill Kerr was a patsy the whole time? Not that your secret is out in the open. What's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's delicious. That's the delicious part? Delicious? Are you going to eat people? Fear? Thanks to our clipboards, I know that each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The, the choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha, huh, the young hero. I've kept a keen eye on you, boy. And you, you and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. If things would have gone a different, a bit differently, you might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have one. Never under underestimate what a great man can do, given time. And now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Sharper ha. coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. <laughs> Enough chit-chat. Let's get the work. Let's get to work, shall we? And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts. With gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. Not the end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Okay, so I think it's this one. Yeah. Windows to the soul. I don't remember what happened in this. Oh! Okay, I think I remember where this line was. This was where we died and he threw us down into the elevator the first time. I think. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes, like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just, I want this all to be over. Of course, I'm sure it'll all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Luca free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Don't believe him, he's a liar! Run away! We're gonna hop away as fast as we can. So does that mean this person is also somebody that he made young? His festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree, this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. 
You know the festival sign waiting to be unveiled. It would be a shame the if someone scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Just the little other little guy in a suit. Who's that dude? Okay, what are you gonna tell us? He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems will look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. So one of the other things theory-wise that I have is that Luca is also really his dad. And then with Valentine or, or Sharper showing his true self, right? We know that it's possible for him to be younger. I didn't know I could do that. Identify yourself, please. Nelly Modil. I work here now. I am unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. This harvest mean. Whoa. You could get a wrench to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junk junkin', sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Bah, ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person who by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded pa paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I don't see nothing if you don't, didn't see nothing. Tazzy, hello, hello, good afternoon. We um, we found we found some information out in the story. <laughs> little little pincher dog, Doberman. I think he's a Doberman. Um. Uh, He's really, he's really the founder. And Gran is not our Gran. She's our mom. I have to lurk, but I hope you are all well. Lovely. We are doing well. Mew Mew is here. Yeah, Rosta Papa. He's taking his nap. He's finally calmed down. But thank you for the lurk. Exactly. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. I okay, can't talk to them. Okay, we need to go to the treehouse. Treehouse is this way. Hey, Jetson. Have you seen Rollo come this way by chin chats? Afraid not. And elusive, as elusive as the fish in this hair pond. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I fish? Can I fish? Can't fish anymore. Can I sit? Okay, I can still fish. I have more words I can use. Just one. Luca tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer. See, this is supposed to be like a memory of his dad. What if that's not really his dad? Reel it in nice and slow. Don't let the line break. Uh, photo? It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Hmm, look at those two young fools. How did it end up in the bottom of the pond? Who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's busy with his new job at Valentine's. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. Okay, so there's enough room on this blanket for one more item. So there's got to be one more word that we find. That will unlock that. Rollo! He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo! Rolo, wherever are you? 
that's not words. <laughs> Wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Will he ever show up? Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Luca sounds like a punk. He's not. He's adorable. He's just a confused little reindeer thing. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course, I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? No, none of this makes sense. Through his tears, <laughs> Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. <gasps> Who could it be? Chapter 5. An angry voice. Could it be Mr. Nuncreed? Could it be uh, the other guy? The, uh, I don't remember his name, but the guy with the, the glasses? Is it Rolo? Is it Beck? Is it Iggy? Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Older Rolo? What? What? Uh, well, we do know Rolo has siblings other than his sister stop right there or i'll Shh, i know it's dark and all but i figured you'd recognize me who are the you figure cocked its head inquisitively is it rollo stop now or i'll clobber you with a baseball bat whoa 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 take it easy luca you need to get your eyes checked it's me rollo why why are you older did we jump through time as we slept? You're like one of his random uncles or something. It's old Rolo and he's still a punk. <laughs> he's not a punk. He's just... Um... Forthcoming? That's not the right word. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle. Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was underground lab or something. They made my 
made my hands all big look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, huh? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower, but beggars can't be choosers. Rolo, it wasn't your hands. My feet, too. Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What his the? His hands shot up to his okay. face. Okay, we didn't go through time. They messed with Rolo. They they put him in whatever this source solution is and made him older. So he must have been the test subject to see if whatever they made could make sharper the right age. Holy Toledo. Rolo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. That's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage. Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched and now I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right. This all seems dangerous. Danger, ha! Huh? Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. That's right, because in one of the storylines too, Beck got hit with the 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 slime and like part of her hair turned gray. With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Take cover. Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I don't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Oh no, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up uh, out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? You, your silly little tree house? Do I... <laughs> I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rollo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened. Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rollo. This has been a weird day at all around, isn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try and salvage my hair, so I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay, just need to play it cool and hope no one notices. Notice what? Oh, nothing. I was just... Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to ha take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was thinking talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to Elena heart. I tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came here to tell you that Nellie had to go to work. Tonight, her and Mr. Kerr decided it would go for it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade A creep. Beck. He is him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nelly. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. Thank you. Yes, I am hungry. I am hungry. I got leftovers. Ooh, hot. That's hot. Spicy. 
spicy hot. Not spicy hot. You want camera? <laughs> you picked the cat up and stole him. You monster. <laughs> it means enough to her to ex uh, exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. People are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Basically, banjo music and farts. Banjo music and farts? <laughs> no, that's not what I said at all. I completed all the budget. Okay. Thank you. Good little dance. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival, but not another she peep. sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey. That doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair she more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off of you. Well, no! Think of how rebellious you look then. Very funny. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait! First of all, this town sucks does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded. No, I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like the look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? This next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Modal seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her. Long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir. I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, Bill. Bill, who's Bill? Uh, oh, it's probably Will. After you fill, after your failures with Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Uh oh. It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I am internally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I have this very clear for you. I brought you in, the, in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you've ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Okay. Oh, so much is happening. Yeah. You're just, just so we're clear when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone. Com capital Look murder. Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Now, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work for someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was the person Beck's mom came to replace? 
That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got, um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's, uh, two days away. Won't she just come home after work? Creep on the radio said they were going to hold her until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in after Beck her. Beck a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. So much is happening in this tree branch. And it's exciting. I can't wait to figure out what's happening. Mimi, this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's just really just a welcome map for my mom's uh, PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Looks like, looks here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? I started to wiggle with excitement. Look at him jumping to the back. I think we're, we're heisting. This is officially a heist. Chapter 6.